this is the Phantom Square one. Unlike many other Square 1 type puzzles I've made in the past, this one actually is just a Square 1 mechanically. Or is it? Well, to someone unfamiliar with the Phantom Square 1, it could be quite a confusing puzzle. The simplest question to answer is how you make slice turns. The slice is simply on one of the central layer's diagonals. This brings us to the second question answered, which is how the puzzle scrambles. You can see that in the scrambled state, the puzzle more or less operates as a mirror square one. However, that isn't all that's special about this puzzle. It's only truly cubic in its solved state. This is because, despite looking like the top and bottom layer cuts are more or less straight, the internal mechanism is offset by several degrees. This means that any turn you make on the top and bottom layer will be tilted. I've already solved the Phantom Square one, and these new mechanics, combined with the fact that all the stickers are the exact same color, definitely makes for quite a confusing solve experience, although one that I find to still be more enjoyable than something like a ghosted puzzle. So let's take a look at the Phantom Square One's design. So here's the design of the Phantom Square One. You can see that it has special curved cuts, where the goal is to kind of make it easier to mask the fact that the puzzle's mechanism is actually tilted within the cube. On top of the curved cuts, I also used variable fillets on basically all of the faces. And, and what this does is it allows me to have more or less rectangular sticker faces, helping to further the illusion that this is more or less a uh, regular square one. This puzzle has a lot of trickery going on, and uh, frankly, if this was printed without stickers, it would still look fairly crooked because you could very obviously tell that, for example, this part is curved and it slants this way. So having a strategic sticker template definitely helped the illusion, which is why I put a lot of time into creating the sticker template as well. I generally create stickers by extruding uh, solids from the parts and then just uh, creating a sketch that uses them. So, I just took the loss and made these parts slightly curved and had the rest of the stickers correctly sided. So that's all for the design of this puzzle. Now let's take a look at how I built it. I assembled the first layer of the Phantom Square one off camera because frankly it was kind of a nightmare to figure out what parts go where and it took me just a really long time to actually get that first layer together and I thought it would be kind of boring to watch. Once I had the first layer on the central parts though, it was a lot simpler to filter through the remaining eight parts in order to create the last layer. You may notice that all of the pieces you see on the workbench here already have the sticker faces sanded. Normally, I sand my puzzles after assembling them, but in this specific case, I actually didn't trust the vinyl that I was using. It's a holographic opal vinyl by Cricut, which is known for being not the best vinyl cutting company. So frankly, I trusted it a lot less than my regular Oracle 651 material. For this reason, I'd spent extra care in sanding all of the parts to make sure that the stickers wouldn't come off uh, when I was solving the puzzle.
After assembling the Phantom Square One, I tensioned it. Now, this puzzle uses just a single screw and no springs, so tensioning is actually pretty simple. You just uh, screw it in until it's tight, and then you unscrew it a little bit if the vertical slice is too tight. You actually want to have roughly the same resistance for the top and bottom layers and the slice layer, because otherwise on a puzzle like this, when you go to turn one layer, it'll automatically default to whatever turns more easily. In fact, that's what killed my original Hexagon 1 Unbandaged design on, from a usability perspective. So it's really important to get the tension just right. But anyway, now that the puzzle is all set, I'm going to sticker it up off camera because I have to be really meticulous to line everything up straight and then take it outside and see how it turns. Was the illusion successful? Honestly, I personally think it was. In its solved state, the Phantom Square 1 looks close enough to a regularly proportioned Square 1, at least for most of its sides. I designed one of the layers to be as close as possible to proportional, but due to where the mechanism's plane of symmetry was located, I couldn't make the second layer look as nice. So you have a weird situation where the top side looks almost exactly like a Square 1 face, while the bottom side looks like a mirror Square 1 face. I originally wanted to have a much more extreme angle at which the cubic shape is offset, but that would have forced me to abandon any semblance of a regular square one appearance and go for a mirror square one look on the top layer, and the bottom layer would have appeared to be horribly disfigured unless I came up with a different trick for it. So I settled for a much more mild angle in order to be able to show off this puzzle's concept without too much trouble. Regardless, the Phantom Square 1 still looks utterly confusing, and fairly cursed when scrambled. Someone in Discord said that after some turns, the puzzle looks like it's actually falling apart due to the differently angled pieces. Talking about the physical implementation for a moment, the Phantom Square 1 turns well, which makes sense because it uses almost the same Square 1 mechanism that I've been using on many puzzles by now. I did have to squeeze and stretch the mechanism a bit, to make it fit within the confines of this specific puzzle. The holographic opal vinyl that I used has exceeded my expectations in that it hasn't started peeling or falling off at all, but unfortunately it scratches quite easily and I have to be careful not to drag the puzzle on any hard surfaces, like a table for example. But anyway, let's go into the forest to scramble the puzzle. Hopefully it's less windy there. Alright, so let's start solving the Phantom Square One. My first step, of course, is going to be to return it back into cubic shape. Uh, yeah, that shouldn't be too hard because that specific uh, aspect of the solve doesn't really differ from a regular Square One. So I'll catch up with you when I get to that step. And here we are in the position where all of the edges are next to each other, and we have a face made entirely of quarters. You have no idea, this looks incredibly cursed in person. I think Sam said it looks like it's genuinely just falling apart, like the puzzle's disintegrating. But yeah, from here, uh, as you know, on a square one, it's really simple to get it back to a cubic shape. And here we are. Calling this a cubic shape would not be technically true, but it's the cubic equivalent. 
So I guess my first step now is going to be to solve uh, roughly one layer, I want to say. So I'm just going to solve the corners of one layer and then solve the edges of that layer. And then the last layer shall be its own separate mess. So this is probably going to take me a while because as on a ghost cube, you can't immediately tell where something goes. So I'm just going to get to it and s see how it goes. Uh, also, the top and bottom layers are different, so I have to be really meticulous when trying to find where a corner actually goes. I guess to start off with, I should probably actually uh, get the central layer back into its correct shape. Just like that. And now I can start. Alright, finally, uh, a single layer of corners is done. So that would be these four corners. And I guess this edge is also in place, which is pretty nice. But yeah, no, that took uh, <laughs> quite an amount of effort. I had to remember where all of the correct parts were and try not to mess those up. And then also, uh, just as you saw, I actually had to flip over this center layer, which definitely added a bit more complexity because, especially because you can't recognize that these parts are in the correct spot if the central layer is flipped over. So I guess now uh, the next step is to finish up these uh, first layer edges. Alright, so we can see that after actually quite a long time, because you can't use the normal square one method uh, effectively on this puzzle, however, despite that, I was able to finish the first layer. And uh, I always want to look at all these stickers to make sure they line up properly, because some of the parts on this puzzle are quite similar. So the first layer corners are solved, and the first layer edges are solved. Um, and it looks that like uh, purely by chance, actually, uh, some of these second layer corners are actually all solved as well. So now all I have to do is permute the last layer edges and I should be alright for this puzzle. Hopefully this is not going to result in parity because that would not be a good time. Uh, this one's in position, so uh, I guess let's try some three cycles and see what happens. And here we are. This insanely confusing puzzle is finally solved. That was definitely a, a bunch harder than solving a real square one. But, I will say, this was nowhere near as annoying as solving a ghost square one or ghost cube or anything. Because on the ghost cube, uh, none of the parts actually look like what they're supposed to look like. Whereas on this phantom square one, all of the parts are actually more or less uh, all right in terms of being close to what they're supposed to be. The difference is that they're all slightly different. But still, uh, due to that I found uh, this puzzle to be much less annoying than solving something like a ghost cube. So surprisingly I think this puzzle actually has a pretty interesting and reasonably challenging solve. I cannot guarantee if this puzzle will ever be available 
I'll think about it, but there's some things I have to like, get over. For example, uh, these uh, stickers, you can't really tell from these angles, but these stickers do scratch very easily. So I guess I could either live with that or find a more durable material. I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't expect this puzzle to be available anytime soon. But anyway, thank you all very much for watching, and have a great day.